Medical school can be difficult. You're thrown into a world where SOB and LFT all have specific meanings, and at times it feels like you're learning another language. In a digital world with more information than we can dream of, how do we decipher the good from the bad? What material will help you most effectively learn? And what resources will help you make the most out of medical school? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And if you're anything like me, starting off as a first year medical student and not knowing what the heck was going on, um, trying to understand how I should study, what resources that I should be using. So I'm gonna be giving you a bunch of resources onto things that I use, and to also some resources that I think will get you a good starting point, especially when you're not coming from any sort of medical background. And these were really helpful resources for me, um, not only now, but especially when I was starting and trying to learn the ropes and trying to get the hang of things. So without further ado, let's get into it. Sometimes the best things for us are staring us right in the eyes. Course material. So this one sounds a bit obvious, but I thought I'd put it in here first because really it is the most important piece of information, the most important resources that you're gonna get um, from the university because it's specific to what they wanna teach you. They're basically telling you, if you wanna be good doctors, this is what I want you to know, so go out there and learn it. And when you're getting lecture notes and when you're getting your seminars and practical work and that sort of stuff, make sure that you're saving them, putting them on a cloud, because most of the time they're very, very good resources. And if they're not, you can use something else, which is what I'm about to show you. We carry them everywhere. So why not use them for good? Applications. Anki is key. So I use Anki pretty much every day. It's basically a flashcard system. So on my phone, I have Anki here. I have my decks built. I prefer not to make my own. I like to use resources online, but this is my go-to when it comes to learning on the fly, when I'm sitting on the toilet, when I'm on the commute, um, all that sort of stuff, Anki is my go-to. And if you're looking for decks, there's a bunch of them online. I'd recommend Zanki if you're getting started out. It's based on the USMLE coursework that you're required to do. And there's plenty more that you can find on Reddit. Just search them up. Or alternatively, you can make your own. And I'd recommend using image occlusion, which is basically covering certain parts of a picture or a diagram. And that way you have to remember the missing labels. Or to use closed passages where you have to fill in the blanks and it's really helpful because you'll read through a certain piece of information and whatever that niche word is or that new term or the pathology is you'll have to actively recall and remember what it is and if all that fails try talk to some people in a grade older than you a lot of the time they'll have their own resources their own notes their own anki decks so i'd suggest going to talk to them the second group of apps that i recommend is bmj best practice and medscape they're really good in terms of getting the first-hand clinical knowledge for example, if I wanted to look at ulcerative colitis, it will give you the presentation, it will give you the investigation that you need to do, differentials, which are really important to give me that little bit of an edge when it came to clinical days and in terms of just knowing the information um, early on so that when you get into your clinical years, a lot of it will make even more sense. With online information reaching infinite, choosing where to go gets complicated. Websites are worth learning from. First up, a really good one is Osmosis. Osmosis has its own YouTube channel with a bunch of videos, but it also has a website where you can sign it. So if you're coming into a new block, you just started med school and you're learning about musculoskeletal and you have no idea what's going on, Osmosis I found really good videos in terms of just getting me accustomed to what the pathology is, a little bit about the physiology. It's a good starting point. And another good thing is that the videos are usually quite short. They're about five to 15 minutes. And in that way, you can take them in bite-sized chunks, especially when you're not really sure of the background. In terms of learning about imaging, x-rays, all that sort of stuff, because you will come across it, I'd recommend Radiopedia or Radiology Masterclass. Radiopedia is great because I remember when I was first trying to learn about how to read a chest x-ray, there was a really good article on there which basically broke it down into a mnemonic, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you just go through that mnemonic and you can find out. So A was just assessing the film quality and looking at airways, and then B was to look at bones, to look if there was any soft tissue or fractures and stuff like that. And you work down this mnemonic and I found that really helpful in terms of creating a system for me when I read x-rays. Not only do they have articles in terms of information, but they give you a range of different pictures of different case studies, questions that you can do. Radiopedia is a really good resource when it comes to anything imaging. Now in terms of clinical stuff, I'd recommend Geeky Medics. If you're not one to read a textbook, which I'll explain later on, and you just wanna get 
your quick information, something that's easily digestible that makes sense, especially from an entry point of view, Geeky Medics is great. They have a website which breaks down medicine into all its different blocks, all its different systems, and they have videos and guides onto how to do specific exams, how to take a respiratory exam, a cardiovascular exam. They make it understandable, especially if you're coming in with no background. I've harped on about this website a bunch of times in previous videos, but if you're looking for some practice material, especially when it comes to early exam time and you just want to test yourself, Pass Medicine is one of the best resources out there. They break it down into the different systems, they give you questions that can make sense and they follow very much the USMLE format and what's great about it is that they give you information at the end. And finally, I can't exclude Wikipedia, it sounds pretty silly, but Honestly, Wikipedia is just great. If you don't know a word, you don't know a term, you're in a lecture and you're not understanding what's going on. I search so many things on Wikipedia every day and honestly, it's pretty good. And most of the time it's quite accurate. It's said that by 2022, online videos will make up more than 82% of all consumer internet traffic, 15 times higher than it was in 2017. So if you're gonna use videos, you might as well learn from them. YouTube channels. So like I said in the previous section, Osmosis makes really good videos, same with Geeky Medics, and they upload to the YouTube channel. Another channel that I fell in love with is Armando Hasugan. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but he basically draws all his videos and voices over them, and his drawings are immaculate. His, the flow of the information is really, really good. He has a website which breaks it down into the systems as well. So check out his channel for really good videos. Ninja Nerd Science. He is an absolute gun. They're a bit longer videos, 20 to 30 minutes, but they do a really good job. And finally, for anatomy, I'd recommend The Noted Anatomist. His videos are clear, the diagrams make sense, and he highlights what you need to know and what you need to look out for. And I can't forget Khan Academy. It really helped me through undergraduate science. It helps me now when I'm looking at certain physiology principles. And it's just you pretty much go to because there's... I don't know a topic that Khan Academy hasn't covered. For all the enthusiasts out there, textbooks. And I wanted to start off with the first one, which is the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. So this is a great little guy. I got it as a gift from a old research team member, which was fantastic. But basically, it is a quick summary of all the different systems. It gives you information about what drugs you should be giving, the dosage, the pathology. It will give you some images of what it looks like. And I pretty much always bring this when it comes to clinical days when I'm in the hospital. Good little handy book to have. The Bible for us medical students, especially in Australia, it might differ in your region, but what we were recommended and what really helps us is Tally and O'Connor's clinical examination. So when it comes to the OSCEs, when it comes to doing anything in the hospital, taking histories, knowing why that patient had that certain lesion on their face and understanding what it all means, Tally's and O'Connor's is the go-to. For my course, most of the time, it's put as recommended readings before our clinical days. And I use it in first year to get me accustomed to all the medical lingo. And what's great about tallies is that it will be relevant for pretty much your whole degree, probably until your junior doctors and residency years. So it's a no brainer to buy. For anatomy, I'd recommend getting these flashcards. If you're old school and you want some tangible flashcards, Netta's anatomy flashcards are really good. How they work is you get a bunch of different pictures on the front and then on the back, they give you all the different explanations and it's Got a little clip here so you can keep them nice and compact in your bag you can scroll through these when you're on the commute or when you're just with some friends and i really like the illustrations there so netter's anatomy flashcards good resource you'll need a good atlas the one that our university recommended and the one that i use is abraham and mcmin's clinical anatomy when you open it up it gives you really nice labeled pictures of all the specimens that you have to look at. So if you're not able to go into the practical labs, like we are not currently because we're in quarantine, you can look through this book and it gives you really nice diagrams, really nice pictures. So when you come to cardiovascular block and you start learning about ECGs, all the squiggly lines, what they mean, it'll do your head in. And even to this day, I still have a lot to work on when it comes to reading ECGs. But this book, ECG Made Easy, is really helpful. It starts from the basics and then it builds up on all your principles and then you'll start to make sense of all the pathologies later on. So if you're anything like me, I was super shy and nervous when it came to taking histories, especially at the start of medical school. I still remember the first day when I took a history from a patient. It was a bit of a train wreck. There was no structure. I didn't really know what questions I had to ask. I kind of just chatted to the patient as I would any other person and did the best job that I could. But if you're looking to understand how to structure your history, how to build patient rapport, and how to just be a better communicator, clinical communication skills for medicine, 
by Margaret Lloyd. Although I'm still rubbish at dealing with bad news, this at least gave me a little bit of moral backing so I can improve my skills for later on. I don't have the physical copy on me, but US Emily Step 1 textbook, which I've mentioned in so many of my other videos, it is the go-to when it comes to just understanding something for the first time and knowing the whole course when there's just so much information out there. So what it really feels like is reading your friend's notes that have been condensed, condensed, condensed to only the high yield, mandatory, need to know facts. So it's a good starting point. It's a good way to feel like if I know this, at least I'll be good for my exams and at least I'll know the fundamentals to make me competent when it comes to going onto the ward. I did cell pathology as a major in my previous science degree. And as part of the subject, we had to get the book Roberts and Cochran's Pathologic Basis of Disease. I don't have the physical copy with me, but that is amazing when it comes to pathology. Not only does it give you images of what it looks like under the microscope, and it just, there's so much information there, more than you probably need. But when you start doing your pathology lectures, I'd really recommend Robin and Cotrans. And tied with pathology is histology, and I'm using the textbook, Histology, a text and atlas by Ross and Paulina. But what's really good about it is at the end of each chapter when you're doing a specific topic, it'll give you a page, they call it plates, and if you're looking at say liver or you're looking at the gallbladder, it will just be two pages there on what liver architecture looks like, what gallbladder architecture looks like, and it's really concise, it's really succinct, and the pictures there are really nice. Well, that's it for me. What resources do you use for medical school? This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are plenty more resources out there. You just have to find what works for you. Everybody learns in a different style. Everybody learns through different resources, but these are my go-tos. These are what I'm using pretty much day to day in med school, and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, can you please smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. But thanks so much for watching. And until next time, this was Sebastian. Stay sharp. I want to spend some time with you. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Just the two of us.